Today is the 2nd of November 2020 and we continue with our Arabic language level 2 at the Barak Wadawa Foundation. I'd like to welcome you all to uh, you know, the continuation of the class. We just finished our fic and here we're going on to our Arabic language. Now last week we again reviewed the plurals and we spoke about the song plurals, the broken plurals. Okay, you all would have remembered that. So today what we want to do actually is to start off with some sentences, okay? That would, well, that would um, and we'll use that as a revision. We did the sentences last week, but I find that we went through it a bit too fast. And, um, you know, for your benefit, you know, we need to probably review these and understand the structures again. And we use that as a revision point for, you know, those laws that were discussed last week. Mashallah. So, we continue here. So, we have these three sentences. The child helped the old dogs in the old tongue. Now, this sentence... Right, the child helped the old dogs in the old tongue. We need to do a quick analysis of it and we see okay, the word helped is the verb. We have the old dogs, that's an adjective construction. We have old tongue, is another adjective construction. So there are two adjective noun construction in this sentence. And um, this one moment, please, to get myself. Right. So, as we said, there are two Noun adjective construction in the sentence. This is the first one here. And this here is the second. Old tongue. The verb in the sentence is helped. Who did the action? The child. And no child, feminine child. So this is the subject. So the child helped the old dogs in the old tongue. Let's look and see the answer for it, and then we'll, we'll analyze it further. So, the, so we realize that the child is feminine. What we need to have is a feminine verb. And what is a feminine verb? Nasarat. Okay? Nasarat is a feminine verb. What is the Arabic term for... I'm sorry. What's the Arabic term for child? You have tiflon become tiflatun. So we have here the word... Tiflatun, it takes the tamar buta. It takes the tamar buta because this here is the feminine verb. And in fact, it's the other way around, right? Because you're a feminine subject, the verb will be placed into its feminine form. Feminine singular form. Then we have the word kilab. The word kilab is the plural of the word kalbun, kalbun kilab. And kilab here is, is a broken plural, and it does not refer to human beings. Remember, all broken plural not referring to human beings will be treated as a singular feminine, feminine singular. So let's look at this word as really being like a feminine singular in usage. And this is how we're going to determine the agreement for the adjective for it. So it's a broken plural, not referring to human being, so therefore, the adjective for it, which is old, will be Qadimun, become Qadimatun. And, and here now, it would be Al-Qadimata, because 
it is the object of the sentence. So we have a tifla too. This is the file, the subject that exists in the case of Rafa by Dhamma. Who did the child help? Or what did the child help? The child helped dogs. So therefore, that's the object, the receiver of the action. And it becomes the maf'ul on bihi that exists in the case of nasb. And nasb here will be by fatha. And as we said, the word kilab is if it is a plural, but what type of plural? A broken plural. And because it is a broken plural, we treat it like a feminine singular word when you have an adjective that goes with it. So therefore we'll say al qadi mata for the tamarbuta, and it says the tamarbuta that is added to it to make it feminine, both of them being in the case of nasp. This is the mausuf, al kilaba, and the sifa for it is al qadi mata. So the four factors in agreement. Then you have fil qariyati, al qaribati in the in the um in the close see in the close tongue. Right, so the word kariba is close. All right, so we, we touched on this already, the same concept. This is feminine, feminine, singular, singular, right? So there's perfect agreement there. Let's move on with this, okay? The new student sat in the big mosque. So let's analyze this before you move on ahead. First of all, we need to identify the type of sentence, right? What type of sentence do we have here? It's a verbal sentence because sat is a verb. Who sat? The students. So this is the subject. But at the same time, the word students is a described noun and the word new is, a, is an adjective. So we have a adjective noun construction here. In the big mosque, in is a preposition. And then you have big mosque, the plural. So you have here mosque, which is the described noun. All right, so it is a mausuf, if you want to use something. Mausuf. And here is the adjective for it that goes with the noun. So let's look and see the structure of it. We have here jealous at the labu. The students sat and notice that even though we are speaking about plural students, which form of the verb is used? We have this masculine singular form. The masculine singular form of the verb is used even though the subject here can be singular, dual, or plural. We'll have the verb being used in the masculine singular form, okay? And the same concept, once the subject is feminine, like what we have above here, right? This is a feminine subject, which of course is singular. We use the feminine singular form of the verb. Whether it was dual or plural, we would have still used the same form of, the, of Nasarat. Understand? And this happens when the verb starts the sentence. Okay? So we have here Jalasat to Labu, who you have, you have new students. The word student, it refers to human being. So therefore, even though it is a broken plural, because remember the song plural, it conforms a pattern. The pattern for the song for the song plural will be una, ina for masculine, and aton with the long tie, the ending for the feminine, as we would have done in our previous classes. Okay, so here we have the broken plural, and the broken plural. Um, is referring to human beings. Therefore, we need a plural adjective for it. And the, the plural of, of Jadidun, which is new, is Judad. So this here is the Mausuf. And here is the Sifa. So the word Tolab, Mausuf, Judadu is Sifa. There's perfect agreement between noun and um, adjective. Fi is harful jar, a preposition. It causes 
the word that follows to be in the case of jar. It is in most, it is in majrur. So this here we have the majrur, which is masajid. Remember the word masajid, it is the plural of the word masjidun, masajid. Whatever plural would it be? Sound or broken. So we do our, our analysis. If it is not sound, it is broken. It doesn't follow the song pattern. So therefore the masajid, it will be considered as a broken plural. Broken plural. Fi causing jar. In case of jar with kasra, this also is a mausuf. And here will be the sifa for it. Okay, so you have mausuf and sifa. Now the important point that I want to show you all here is we have fil masaji d. It is in the case of jar. This word masajid is actually, you know, it actually comes from the word masjid, which is a masculine word. But in its plural form, it will be considered as a singular feminine. And that is the point that I want to drive into you all. So this will be treated as a singular feminine usage. And that is because it's a broken plural, not referring to human beings. And the sifa for it, the adjective for it, will be taken bita marbuta, which is the feminine ta, in order to establish agreement. Let's look at the next sentence. The beautiful girls looked at the distant stars in the sky. So let's analyze this again. So you have firstly, the beautiful girls looked. So there is a verb, it's a verbal sentence. In the verbal sentence, we look for the file, which is the girls subject. This is a plural word, you have S there at the end. So therefore you're speaking about a mausuf. And here the word beautiful will be the sifa. You have the word at, which represents, which is a preposition, right? And we have stars is the noun after the preposition. Even though distant come before it, distant is the is the sifa or the the the, the adjective, right? It's the adjective or the sifa. And then you have stars is the mausuf. Okay. In is a preposition again. The sky is a majrur, the noun that comes after it. So let's look at the Arabic. You have here, nazarat al-banatu. Notice that this is a feminine plural. But what did we use for the verb? A feminine singular. And why did we do that? Even though we have a feminine subject, this is the law that I refer to you in the beginning here. Once the subject is feminine, no matter singular, dual, or plural, the verb will be used in its feminine singular form. So you have nazarat, which is the feminine form. You have the ta that indicates femininity, right? the feminine ta. This is plural, but girls, what type of plural? Broken or sound? It's a song plural. So in a song plural, of course, it is referring to human beings. The adjective for it could also be in a plural form, in agreement. So you have plural, and you have the plural. So you have albanatul jamilatu. So there is perfect agreement with the mausuf and the sifa, the described noun and the adjective. And then you have further to that, you have ilah, which is harful jar, the preposition. The noun that comes after is the majrur. Okay, so this is the majrur. Majrur exists in the case of jar. This is also a mausuf, a described noun, whereby you have baridati is the sifa for it, the adjective. And the word nojum, it's a plural. What type of plural? First of all, we identify it as being broken because it does not conform to the song pattern. So if it is broken, so it's a broken plural. Does the word stars, does it refer to human beings? We say no. So if it does not refer to human beings, 
then we will treat it as a feminine singular word. And if it's a feminine singular word, then the word ba'ida, which is the adjective, will just take the term marbuta for agreement. Of course, only for four factors whereby the sifa follows the mosuf, it must be found. So we're going to say anujum al ba'idati. Okay? All the adanya fis samai fi is harful char preposition. Samai is the much roar. The noun after the preposition that exists in the case of jar with kasra. Going here. Next one, I heard the adhan for many streets. Now this, let's do it one time. Who heard? I heard. So therefore it's a, a verbal sentence again. This of course is the subject, but we are not seeing any word for Anna outside or so. But Anna is understood in the front, right? It's as though you said Anna Samir too. I heard. So that is found within the verb. A simple way of saying it is that you can say Al-Fa'ilu fil fail, Al-Fa'ilu mahdufun fil fail, Al-Fa'ilu mustatilun fil fail. So it is found, it is hidden, it is covered, it is understood within the verb itself. And the, and the meaning of it, ma'anahu ana, and the meaning of it is I, I heard. So if I am the door of the action, what did I hear? The azan. So the azan become the maf'ul on the he. The object, and if this is the object, then it exists in the case of nasb, nasb by fatha, men harful jar, and then ya shawari al kathirati, the word shawari'un, it is the plural of shari'un, shari'un street shawari, right? So we have mina shawari al kathirati, the many streets. Note this is a broken plural again. Broken plural, does it refer to human being? No. So therefore we treat it as a feminine singular word. And the word kathirati will be considered as the sifa, which is singular feminine that agrees with it. So I know we had done it last week, but I want to bring back this point so that you all will remember and revise it, right? So you spend a few minutes in reviewing that. And because you have these others here, but I'm not going to go through in all of these details with these here. We have the tall merchant sat on the horse of the young doctor. Notice, tall merchant sat, jalasatta chiratawilu. Subject, file, case of rafa by thamma. Agreement between subject and verb. Mausuf and sifa. The mausuf is, in case of rafa, and the sifa is also in the case of Rafa Maidamma. Allah is harful jar. Hisoni. Hisoni tabib. Is Muzof Muzofilai. Remember Muzof Muzofilai? Horse of doctor. You have the off coming, the off structure. So therefore we have Muzof Muzofun ilaihi. So Allah acts upon Hison. So this is also Majrur, first of all, that causes the case of jar. And then when we when we analyze that, then we say, okay, what is his son again? His son is also a mudof. And because it is a mudof, that which comes after will be the mudofilai. Nothing goes in between the mudof and the mudofilai. So even though we have the word young in the English, young came before the word doctor, right? But we do not apply adjectives like that in the Arabic language. Adjective goes after. So we have Tabibi al Jadidi, new young. We could even use this, but as I said, Sagir as well. The next sentence the shirt of the beautiful girl is on the table of the kitchen. So we have Kamisul Binti, Bintil Jamilati, the shirt of the beautiful girl. So the word Kamis is a mudaf. Before you even go on to that, we have is coming in the sentence without any verb. So therefore, what type of sentence would it be? A nominal sentence. Let's get that off. Being a nominal sentence, we will have a mubtarani khabar. Let's look for that. What is? The shirt is, right? Even though you have the extension of the beautiful girl, what really is? The main thing is the shirt. So the shirt, therefore, will be considered as the mubtara. Let me analyze this a bit. So this here, 
is the subject of the nominal sentence. Or we can say it is the mob ta da. Then what is the khabar? Well, we don't have any khabar, a direct khabar. There's an understood khabar, which is like, you know, the shirt is found, present, you know, understood khabar. But nevertheless, let's continue. So we have the shirt of the beautiful girl. What again is shirt? We have the off structure here. What comes before it is the move off. And therefore, girl is the mudophilai. Beautiful needs to go after girl when we translate it as, as what we have here. So let's move on again. So we have Kamisul bin Dil Jamilati, the shirt of the beautiful girl, ala ma'idatil matbaqi. Ala, harfuchar, preposition, ma'idatil matbaqi on the table of the kitchen. So ma'irati is the majroor, the noun after the preposition. It exists in the case of jar. Jar takes kasra. It is also a mudof to kitchen, mudof ilai. You have table of the kitchen. So you have the off structure existing here again, right? Keep that in mind, the off structure. So therefore this is the mudof and kitchen will therefore be Mudof ilaihi. Right? So therefore, that will be the Mudof and the Mudof ilai. And we see the laws being applicable here. And moving on again. The big boys went to the old mosque. What do we have for this? The big boys, big kibar, the proud of Kabir, went ilal masjid al qadimi to the old mosque. Now, in a sentence, we realize that the word al awlad it is a broken plural, right? Does it refer to human beings? Of course, boys, you know, it is in relation to human beings. So therefore, the adjective will be considered in its plural form. So we look and see, is there a plural for kabir? Yes, there is, which is kibar. So you're going to have al awlad al kibaru the big boys went. And the same law that we mentioned earlier, so long as the noun is masculine, once the verb comes in front, the verb will maintain masculine singular form, which is Zahaba. So the big boys went, Ilal Masjid al Karim, this is a simple structure, Ilal is Harfujar, preposition. Al Masjid is Majroor, the noun that came after, that exists in the case of Jar by Kasra. And then we have, it is also a mausuf, the described noun. And the sifa or the adjective is placed after. You have qadi, me. All four factors are in agreement there. Now we have one more sentence. The new Muslims helped the tall teacher. So new Muslims, feminine, feminine new Muslims. So therefore this is a plural word, right? Muslims here is plural. Um, new is used here, help the tall teacher feminine. Let's look at the Arabic. Nasaratil Muslimatul Jadidatul Mudarisatatawilata. So we have structure, verbal sentence, the verb starts a sentence. Who is doing the action, masculine or feminine? You say feminine, which is new Muslims, feminine. So what is the word for new Muslims? Al Muslimatu. It's a plural of Muslimatun. Muslimatun. So we put the verb in it. Feminine singular in this case here. Even though we have this being a plural. Why? I'm, I'm reiterating again. When the, the noun, the subject, is placed after the verb, all that is required for agreement is gender, not number. So even though this is plural, what we consider is that it being feminine to determine the verb, which is Nasarat, and we use the feminine singular. All right, so let's move on. So here we have the word Muslimat. It's a sound feminine. You have Atun ending, good? The, 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 the plural of the word Jadidatun is Jadidat. So since it is referring to human beings, 
we need to apply the plural of the adjective. If it wasn't referring to human beings, then we apply, you know, we treat it like a singular feminine. But here it is applicable to human beings. And as such, we'll use the plural of the adjective, which is al jadida to note both of them in the case of Rafa, Mausu Sifa, al al, plural, plural. So there's agreement. And, and who did they help? Who did the new Muslims help? We have here the word al mudarrisata, the teacher. So therefore, she becomes the object, the maful on bihi. Right, so here is the maf'ul bihi of the verb. And the maf'ul bihi exists in the case of nasb, nasb dikin fatha. This is also a mausuf. Here the wutawilata is the sifa of the sentence, um, of the, for the word. So mausuf and sifa construction. This is feminine singular, feminine singular. And as such, it will be considered in proper agreement. So that's with respect to the revision that we were considering. Now today, inshallah, what you want is to move on to a new topic, right? All of us know the different types of sentences that are in the Arabic language. Now today, we have the verbal sentence and we have the nominal sentences. Today, what we would be doing as extended nominal sentences. Okay. So let's get into this. So we're going to do the use of kana. Kana. What does kana means? And um, this is the next topic, the next chapter in your text. Last week I had highlighted it for you all. Okay, so. Before we actually go to the slides, let me do a little work with you all on the, the whiteboard. All right, Bismillah. So we are going to do transformed nominal sentences. That's our main topic today, right? Transformed Nominal sentences. And what we want to introduce is something that I think we have met them already. It's just to put them into um, a structure now. That is the use of kana and the use of inna. Okay. So let's get an, uh, a general nominal sentence, a simple sentence. So we have, for instance, a nominal sentence like um, one here we have Zaid is a merchant. What is the word for merchant? Tajirun. So let's translate the sentence. We have Zaidun Tajirun. Zaid is a merchant. Remember, we do not have anything for is our arm coming in between the mubtada and the khabar. Let's do a little analysis of this as well. What is Zaid in the sentence? Zaid is considered to be the mubtada, right? It is the mubtada or this, the subject. And what is Tajirun in the sentence? It is the Khabar, or the predicate. 
We identify that boat. The Mubtala and the Khabar exist in the case of Rafa. And Rafa usually takes a Dhamma, what we have identified so far. Okay? Whether single or Dhamma, um, double. Now, this is our basic nominal sentence. And what we are going to do now is to introduce certain particles and probably some uh, weaker verbs to it and see how, the, how these verb responds, how these sentences respond, and what changes is going to take place with it. Okay, so let's shift this a bit. So now what you want to do is to, is to introduce the first thing, which is kana. In Arabic, in order to express was or were, we use a sort of a defective verb called kana. So kana means he was, and of course, if you say we were, it have the different forms for it. Um, inshallah, when we go into the slide, we'll see the different main forms of usage of it. And this, this year, is it masculine form? How do you put this into the feminine? We add the ta, so you can say what? Ka, not. Ka not means she was. It's the feminine form. So what is kana? He was. What is kana? She was. Right? And it have the different forms, as I said, I, we, you know, um, you want man, you want woman, what form they would use. Now, having understood this concept, kana, it acts in the same place that we that we'd use a verb. So it acts like a verb then, right? Acts like a verb. So therefore, the meaning Zaid is a merchant. This is actually the present tense. Zaid is a merchant is the present tense. In order to, to sort of give a past meaning to it, okay? You want to say Zaid was a merchant. The same sentence, we are now going to transform it with use of Kana, and this becomes what? This is the second sentence. Zaid was a merchant. What do we do? He said that this kana acts like a verb. So therefore, we will place the kana in front. Of course, Zaid is masculine. So which form are we going to use? The masculine form, of course. Right? So you'll see kana. And we have Zaid, and then you have the Otajir, right? So Kana, Zaid, Tajir. I did not put in the, the vowels here intentionally. We'll do that when we analyze it. So this is how basically we say Zaid was a merchant now. What, what, what was the only thing we did? We added Kana to the word. And instead of saying is, the meaning became was. Kana zaid tajir. Now, kana, whenever it introduces a sentence, there are two main changes that takes place. Right? So whenever it introduces a sentence, there are two main changes that usually takes place. The first change is that you know, one is change of name. And the second change is a change of case. So we have the change of name and a change of case. What have we identified so far? We identify that Zaid Tajiron, Zaidun Tajiron, the name for Zaid here from a grammatical standpoint is that it is the subject or the Mubtada. 
And the Utajiron, we identify to be the Khabar or the predicate. So that's the name. So if you say when Kana comes, it causes a, a name change. What change is really going to take place now? Okay. So therefore, the first change that is going to take place is in is the, is the name, um, change of name. And the Mubtada will now be called Ismu Kana. How is it called? Ismu Kana or the noun of Kana. The noun of Kana. And also here, I just, okay. The, the, the word Tajir, how was it called before? It was called the Khabar, as you see here. Right, it is in a normal sentence without any introduction of anything. It is the Khabar, when Kana introduces it, the word Tajir is now called the Khabar Kana, Khabar Kana. Or the predicate of Kana. So let's get this again. We mentioned here as the law, when Kana introduces a sentence, what has happened? He said that when Kana introduces a sentence, There are two things. What are the two things? Change of name. So we did that. So Mubtada is now called Ismukana. Khabar is now called Khabarukana. Ismukana, the noun of Kana. Khabarukana, the predicate of Kana. That's the first thing. Then further to that, you mentioned that there is a change of case. What are the two cases here? We said that the subject of the Mubtada, as well as the Khabar, the predicate, both of them exist in the case of Rafa. Let's see what change will take place as regarding case. So we say here that, sorry, the Ism of Kana, it exists in the case of Rafa. So therefore, the same case that existed for the Mubtada, the same case really exists and remains for Kana. So Ismukana exists in the case of Rafa. And we said that the Rafa, Rafa can take place. Usually it will take a Vama, either tenuine or single. Good. And secondly, the Khabar of Kana exists now in the case of Nasb. And Nasb, we said, either it will take the double, with of course the Aleph following it, or the single Fatah. Usually, yeah, there are other words that, uh, you know, will be differ, will differ as regarding the vowel ethics. But the, the general things is this. What you need to learn, which is standard, is that Ismukana exists in the case of Rafa. Khabarukana exists in the case of Nasb. So let me summarize this again here, quickly for you all. We said that in transformed nominal sentences, it is basically taking a simple nominal sentences, introducing particles with that nominal sentence and the sentence transforms. We are identifying one of such um, uh, introduction, which here is the word kana. Kana, it means was. It makes the word, you know, with a past tense meaning. So what it does, it indicates a past meaning. Past meaning. And we of course know is, is present, was, is past, right? And will be is the future tense. So if we use kana in its past tense form, and this is the past tense of it, we are going to get a past meaning, which is was or were. There is also the present future tense meaning of uh, inflection of kana. If you to use that, 
we're going to get the mean of is or you know um will be sorry it will be will be or shall be okay now we introduced it we use kana with a simple nominal sentence and we said that it really it, it, it uh, there were two main changes the first one change of name what is the name change previously the mubtada was the name given to a simple nominal sentence we see that that mubtada is now called ismukana and the ismukana exists in the case of rafa and rafa usually takes dhamma so you see why we could now put dhamma there we have a reason for it the dalil for it and the reason for it is that zaidun is the ismukana the noun of kana that exists in the case of rafa and being in the case of rafa it will take dhamma okay because of this type of noun secondly we said that the predicate or the khabar is now called khabarukana and the khabarukana exists in the case of nasb and nasb usually takes fatha so what vowel will be applying on the word tajir tanwin fatha and of course an alif goes after it so it become kana zaidun tajiran kana zaidun tajiran so this here is an example using the masculine form let's look at another example and here we want to introduce the feminine form of the word so we have these two considerations that have to be considered here so we have a sentence third sentence let me use a different color we have fatima is oh let's put it into the the the, the normal sentence first similar the simple sentence first and then we'll introduce the kana okay so fatima is a doctor fatima is a doctor so with respect to this fatima is a doctor we have the arabic for it fatima to to be fatima to let, let me erase this and back fatima to tabibatun Right? Fatima to Tabibatun. What is Fatima in the sentence? Fatima will be considered the Mubtada. And Tabiba is considered to be the Khabar. Mubtada exists in the case of Rafa. It will take Dhamma. So therefore we have Fatima to khabar exists in the case of rafa by dhamma and as such you're going to have tabibatun hope everyone is following now we want to introduce kana to the sentence and see what is going to happen so we're going to change the name of the sentence and the sentence will be now sentence four fatima was a doctor fatima was a doctor we have was coming in what we need to do because we look and we see okay we have fatima which is feminine what are we going to use we're going to use cannot we cannot use kana we have to use the feminine form which is cannot we apply the the ta on the word and as such we take the same sentence and throw in cannot in front of it so it will now become ka not who fa tima to and then we have
So B Bahtan. So we have here Kanat Fatima Tobiba. We are applied the vowel in a little while. Okay. So we want to identify our changes. First of all, we have Kanat. It introduces the sentence. So we become a transformed nominal sentence now. Fatima. How are we going to call this? Change of name and change of case. Two main things. What happened to the Mubtada? How was it called with Kana Zaid? Ah, it became, it, you know, it, it, it was now called Ismu Kana. And the Khabar was called Khabaru Kana. So in a like manner, we're going to have Fatima as being the Ismu Kana and Tobiba tun or Tobiba will be considered as the let me separate here a bit. We're going to be the Khabaru Kanat. You can say Kana Kanat. Okay, no problem. Let's leave it as Kana. So we have the Ismu Kana and the Khabaru Kana. That the first change, change of name. What about the case? We had previously Fatima to Tobi Batun. What did we say the case should be? Above in this first example, we mentioned that the Mubtara maintains, not there, the, the Mubtara maintains its case, right? We have Rafa as well. So therefore, in a like manner, we're going to have here. The Ismukana exists in the case of Rafa and Rafa will by Zomma. Here now is a proof that we can say Fatima too. Then we have the Khabarukana, which is Tabiba Tun previously, has been the Khabar, case of Rafa. What is the law now? The Khabarukana exists in the case of Nasb. So therefore, it will be the same thing here. Nasb will be by Fatha, whether it be Tanwin fatha or single fatha. Okay, so in this case here, let's say to be batan and it will be in agreement. So the sentence will become Kanat Fatima to Tobi Batan. Fatima was a doctor. So this is the use of Kana. So let's go back to our slides. So we have Zaid was a student, Fatima was a student. So we have the Ism Kana. It's called the subject of Kana. And we have the Khabaru Kana, which is the predicate of Kana. Right? We mentioned here that the Ismu Kana exists in what case? It usually exists in the case of Rafa. And Rafa usually takes Dhamma. While the Khabaru Kana usually exists in the case of Nasb. And it takes a fat hindsight. So you have the, the Khabaru Kana usually takes fatha, being in the case of nasb. So you see when kana is used, there must be agreement between ismu kana and the weak verb kana with respect to gender. We touched on that. If zaid is this, the ismu kana, we have to use kana in its masculine form. And if it is that we have Fatima as being the subject, the subject of kana or the ismu kana, what would we do? We will place kana in its feminine form by adding the star and it now become kanat kanat okay and um, it will take its khabar in the case of nas by fatha so notice that the change that will occur here will be by nas nas of case of nas by fatha and this is where the difference is because in a normal or a simple nominal sentence, the Mubtara and the Khabar both would have existed in the case of Rafa. Okay? The Ismu Kana exists in the case of Rafa and usually takes a Dhamma. While the Khabaru, um, it's not supposed to be in there, the Khabaru Kana exists in the case of Nasb. All right, so this is really, this here is really so the, the Khabaru Kana. Exists in the case of Nasb and takes a Fatha. Everyone get it? So, this is an overview of 
the use of kana right here, what we have done in our whiteboard. Let's move on. Now, I told you all that kana can be used in its present future tense as well. And likewise, kana has its own inflections. We did inflections for fataha, nasara, daraba, sami'a, and we did not do all the 14 forms of the inflection. We selected a few. And those selected few are also applicable with kana. So kana means he was, say after me, kana, he was, kanat, she was, kanat, she was. Now note something here. Kana, when you want to express the form of you or the second person, singular masculine, it changes its form. It now become kunta. Right? It become kunta. And once you get this form, then all the others follow suit. So you have kunta, you masculine were, kunti, you feminine were, kuntu, I was, kun na, we were. Okay? So let's look at this again. Kana, he was. Kanat, she was. Kunta, you masculine were. Kunti, you feminine were. Kuntu, I was. Kunna, we were. Now, the thing that may confuse you is how did we get kunti? Now, you see this word kana originally came from the verb kaf wawan nun. It was originally kawana, right? That's the origination of kana. Well, what happened was that kana then change this wow into an aleph because the wow ya and aleph are considered to be like weak letters when you're dealing with verbs and you'll see a lot of weak letters coming up so what happened to this it then changed to calf aleph and known and the general law is this that once you have the weak letter before it is a fat in front of it it will take a aleph. Just like the word kola. Everybody here call Allah or call a rasul. What is the origination of kola? Kola actually was of wow and lamb. Kawala. And from that word you have kola. In a like manner, you have kawana. It became kana. Now when we started the studies of our weak verbs, we'll get more into that. So I just give you a little hint of it. That the reason why it became like that is because it uh, has a wow, which is a weak letter. And the weak letter is now converted into an aleph when there's a fatha in front of it. Right? So you have kana. And there are many words, ba, you know, soma. Now, this word soma is something that probably we would have used in duas, right? What do we say? Allahumma ini sumtu laka. Sumtu. What is sumtu? It, it resembles kuntu, but it came from soma. It is because it takes the same type of pattern like that, or like fast. You understand? And as such, it resembles this. So you get kuntu, I became. Sumtu, I fasted. Right? So I just had an example here. Now, why is it that we went towards the Dhamma? Well, there are laws pertaining to weak verbs that Inshallah, we will come across later down the road. But for the time you need to know, okay, it have a wow. Wow tend to agree more with Dhamma than that of Fatha and so on. So therefore, because of the wow, really, and there are other factors as well, as I told you, I'm not going to the full extent of it. It takes the Dhamma at this point. Understand? Instead of Kantu or Kanta, it becomes Kunta. The wow influence influences the Dhamma. Just that, like, just like you know, a ya influences the kasra. So if it was a ya in the middle there, and I had to change, you may probably have a kasra coming before it. 
I just had a little glimpse into that topic, but we ain't touched the topic, is it? Just getting a little idea of why, right? So yeah, kunta. Inshallah, gradually we'll reach there. Don't think of it as being a difficult thing. Inshallah, we'll reach there when that time comes. For the time in, you need to know that the transition is kana, kanat, kunta. This is this is a key area to remember it, right? Just as we might have, for instance, dharaba, dharabat. What it become? Dharabta, dharabti, dharabtu, dharabna. Here we have in kana, kanat. And here's where the main change takes place. You're going to be kunta, kunti, kuntu, kunna. And with the aleph, it extended here, it means we. Okay? So that is as you got in the past tense of it. We have as well the present future tense. I know we had done all of these things, but we need to get abreast of our situation again. So therefore, we have yakunu. Yakunu is the present future tense. You all remember yafalu, yaftahu. Yaftahu become what? Taftahu. You one man will be taftahu. The form of she is hitting. I'm sorry, she is opening. And you one man is opening. They are the same form. Taftahu. Right? And then you have you one woman going to become taftahina. I am opening aftahu. And we are opening naftahu. Now what I did there is really for you all to get a, 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 a small little revision on the beginning form so you have ya yaftahu like yakunu ta just like taftahu just like takunu and it's the same thing for she and you it is like taftahu again right takunu you one man and you have taftahina a takunina simple takunina is the same thing takunina so you have the E in the ending with the tiny front. You give the meaning of you one woman. And with the Aleph, just like we say, Aftahu, you have Akunu. Allahumma inni asumu gharan. I'm using words that you all probably would learn. The person say, all oh, I intend to fast tomorrow. Asumu, from Soma. Right? So you have Akunu, I. And then you have the noon in the ending. I'm sorry, the beginning. Nakunu, it means we. Okay, so we'll do a little revision of this next week. I want to move on, inshallah. So here we have some associates of Kana. Let's take note of these things. There are words that act in a similar manner like Kana. It's just only, just only a few. Now, for instance, the word Sora. Sora means he became. So therefore, you want to say Zaid is a merchant. What would we say? Zaidun Tajirun. But if you want to say Zaid became a merchant, instead of putting Kana, what do you do? You put Sora. So it becomes Sora, Zaidun, Taji, Run. Two changes. Change of name and change of keys. So Zaidun, I'll just write that there so you all will see it, right? So you have... Sora, Zaidun, Sora, Zaidun, yeah. So this is Sora, Zaidun, Ta. Jiran. So Sora is acting just like Kana because they're the associates of Kana. They would have the same two changes, change of name and change of case. So the first change will be change of name. Instead of saying Mubtara, we will now say Ismu Sora. And the change of, of Tajiran here will be, instead of saying Khabar, it will be Khabaru Sora. What does Sora mean? Became. So, Sora Zaid on Tajiran. Zaid became a merchant. So, now Lysa is another one. It really means not. So, it acts in the same manner. So, that's one example here. Say Lysa 
Zaidon. Tajiran. Right? Laisa Zaidon Tajiran. What does this mean? Take out Laisa. What do we have? Zaidon Tajiron, right? Zaid is a merchant. With Laisa, the same two changes take place. What are they? You're going to get Ismo Laisa that exists in the case of Rafa by Dhamma here. And then you're going to have a Khabaru Laisa which exists in the case of Nas by Fatha. So you're going to get Laisa Zaidun Tajiran. Zaid is not a merchant. Right? And each of these particles, now they are different, eh? they, they are much more. This is just introducing them slowly. So you have the particle Sora and the particle Lysa. They act in a similar way like Kana. And the effect will be Kana with the Ismus, Ismu Kana and the Khabaru Kana. So let's stop at this point with this part of it. And um, inshallah, I will. I will do the other part of the, the session now. We'll do just one hadith and then we'll move on to um, the Qasnabin. So this is second section for the Arabic. Remember we do, I told you three sections. I don't want to spend too, too much of time with this. I'm just only want to do one hadith study really, right? But we'll look at the, the grammar of it. And further to that, we will look at the, a few little explanations, important points in it. And then we'll go on to Qasr Nabi. Yeah. So Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Rasulullah said, you can say after me, Al Majalisu Bil Amanati. Say again after me, Al Majalisu Bil Amanati. Al Majalisu Bil Amanati. Al Majalisu Bil Amanati. Okay. So this word, Al Majalis. It comes from the word majlis. And if you can look closely to it, you'll see the word jim, lam, and sin. Jalasa. What is jalasa? He sat in. So a majlis is really a place that people sit down. Now, before we go into all of the word derivative and so on, let's look at the type of sentence. What type of sentence do you think this is? This is a nominal sentence. And in a nominal sentence, what do we have? The mubtara. What is the mubtara? Al majalisu. That which comes before the is our am. So if a gathering are, this is a plural word, and you can identify now whatever plural this is. If I ask you whatever plural, what would you say? Is it a song plural or is it a broken plural? Of course, you will say it is a broken plural. You know why? It does not conform to the song pattern. The song pattern is una, ina endings, or atun endings. And here, what do we have? An odd pattern from that. So therefore, it's a broken plural. Okay, so we have the a ah, gatherings, a ah, gatherings. So the gatherings, right? Al majalisu, the plural. Al majalisu. It is the mubtada, subject of the nominal sentence. What case? All mubtada will exist in the case of Rafa. And Rafa, as you said, most likely it will take a Zamma. So we have Al Majalisu. Al gives the definite meaning. Continuing here, we have B. What is B? B is a harful jar, a preposition. All prepositions are considered to be constant. Constant meaning that it will not undergo any particular change, especially with cases and so on. So these are constant particles. And thirdly, we have the word that comes after the preposition is called majrur 
مجرور which is the word here الأمانتي بالأمانتي so مجرور word of the proposition it exists in the case called جر and جر usually takes كسرة so you will say بالأمانتي بالأمانتي so the hadith again everyone المجالس بالأمانتي the gatherings or, or gatherings where the al is used um, it's an alif lam which uh, encompasses all so it is all gatherings are to be kept in confidence these words the word amana really mean trust confidence okay so gatherings are to be kept with confidence al majalisu bil amanati so you understand the word structure and uh, you know I, i'm advising you all now we are doing different things we're doing the arabic as grammar we're doing a hadith and we are going to do kasuna a little bit now each of these going to have different vocabulary it is good as a practice for yourself get a notebook a smaller notebook nothing too big that you can walk around with and so on and your sisters put in their purse whatever and as the new words come about, you write it. So you create in one place with all of your vocabulary. Okay? So that's a good advice for, for you know, learning of vocabulary. You go somewhere, you could open it and check. Paper it nice in your nice fancy color and whatever. So you have something that you could, you could refer to if you sit down with him by the doctor, by the dentist, going to an appointment, or so as the case may be. Okay? So the hadith here, a little majority so will amana. That gatherings are with trust. What does this hadith mean? Let's look at some meanings from the hadith. First of all, the hadith says here, and just pinpoint a few of this here. One, majalis refers to any private meeting. Now, if it's a public meeting, like for instance, in the open public, a public square, or in the massage, or open hall, well, then it means that the information that is given there is really for public use. Okay? And no big deal with that. However, it here refers to a private meaning. Secondly, it is in relation to a plural meaning, various types, whether of matters relating to actual of the dunya. So the, the word that is used in the Arabic here is the plural, al-majalis, meaning that all different types of majlis should be kept in confidence. Whether it mean, mean things relating to the akhirat, like, or things relating to the dunya. You may have a private meeting with an alim concerning a, a, a masla that you want to know for your own self. Right? Of course, if it's a private thing that is not really something that should be shared, then you keep it with that confidence. Or a person wants to do a, a, some sort of a correction. And out of hikmah, he calls you separately in a private meeting. And then he's indicating and he's showing you how you should wash your area in wudu, then if someone is there as well and you see that person or you hear that person get being corrected, it is not your business to go and relate this to everyone and say, boy, that man don't know how to make wudu, boy. You know? Maulana so I'm to teach him where his elbow ends or whatever. So whether the matter is in relation to the akhirat of the dunya. So with respect to the dunya, a person might want to have a little majlis with someone, a meeting with someone concerning someone he wants to marry, or he wants to open a business, or he wants to engage in some field of studies. Okay? If the meeting is held in a private session for these individuals only, then it should not be open to the public as though it is public knowledge. Understand that? Unless there is an open permission to do so. You know, some people say, no problem, you could tell whosoever, you teach a person something, and you say you could tell them, go, go, go and teach that. Or it is understood as regarding that field that you can teach what is done in a private meeting, then that's different. But when it is done or it is called as a separate thing, like you have a board meeting for the masjid, or a few members come together to discuss something, a new strategic plan for an institution, for instance, that is their thing. It is not for you to go and tell your wife, or the wife to tell the husband, 
or for them to tell the neighbor or the friend what the, the institution is going to do, unless it is something that that is, is, is understood to be done. Okay. Secondly, amanat. What is amanat? This is the quality of trust and confidentiality that a person has. What happens in the meeting stays in the meeting. It is wajib, essential to preserve what was discussed. So sometimes you know everybody hold public know that your own family don't know. You know why? Alhamdulillah, a person he uphold this. And this now is something that you must understand that when this is broken, when amanat is broken, what it does. It leads to betrayal of trust, which is a sign of hypocrisy of a person. So once you ask to keep something as a trust, don't let it slip out your mouth. Otherwise, you know what? That is one of the traits of the hypocrites. Next point. In them, if the meeting concerns a matter of unlawful haram, harm to others or wrongdoings to others, then to inform the relevant authority is not against a man. So a few people come together. Boy, let me have a little meeting. You know what? Let's go and kill that guy. Or let's go and rob so and so. That girl, she lives alone in a house. Let's go and rape her. Or let's go and thief. Let's go and embezzle. So all of these things are harm and wrongdoing to others in a majlis. That, that was kept there. You're not going to maintain this now. Okay? Because the, the, the harm of keeping the secret leads to the uh, um, the actual breaking of the hukuk, the hukuk al ibad, the rights of others, right? So it is actually preserving the hukuk of others. That is what you want, the rights of others. Now, there are exemptions. Now, Richard mentioned of certain things, like, for instance, plans to murder. So you discuss plan to kill someone, which is haram. Then you should not keep it by yourself because you become a part of the whole problem. Or to rape a woman, or to usurp the wealth of, of, of others, or likewise hurting the creation of Allah. In this situation, what should be done is that you don't apply this masla of al majalis bil amana, but rather what is done is that the person should inform the necessary authority. If it is not that you're going to inform the necessary authority or someone who can make a difference, then to utter that to someone else is causing fitna. You know? To relate to others who cannot make a difference is actually creating fitna and may even constitute backbiting. So we, we mentioned, whether it be, you can't tell him, Imam Sab, them guys are planning to do so and so. Or you go to the police, or you call the authorities, or, you, or as a child, you inform the parent, or as a student, you inform the teacher, or as a younger person, you inform the older person, the elder, a younger brother or younger sibling, you inform a bigger one. Understand? Inform the uncles and the aunts. Inform the respectable people in the community. When you do that and you feel that they have a greater level of authority than yourself, that they can make a better judgment of doing action with it, then you are not that then you are not breaking this aspect of al majalis bilamana. However, if it does not involve harm or hurt others, then to do so is like backbiting. Know that well. Okay. So we'll stop there. Next class, inshallah, we'll continue it. The next study so that. So we have Kasun Nabi and I want to start today, inshallah. Now, I just want to highlight something here. In this section of Qasunabin, this is like doing adab. So all what we are doing is put into the Arabic. Notice that the book that we are doing is Adat Olibin. Right, fine, I'll do the, lect the lecture explanation there. That's the true enough flavor of hadith and to make us feel happy that we are able to understand the words of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we can benefit from it from our life, right? But going through now Qasunabin, we're going to have the similar thing. We're going to learn lessons of the prophets, but it is really to do adab, which is another aspect of the language, like more like literature. And here we'll see the usage of phrases, the usage of words. Take note of your vocabulary, 
as we go along, inshallah. Okay, so let's move on there. We have Qasunabiyin. Now, this is basically from the text that we have been using. As you notice here, it's a flowing page. It says lesson like number one. It have, I can send you a copy of this, this actual text itself. I repeat it any group and you all can, which if you want, you can print it, whatever that is up to you. These books are available in Ireland for sale or probably in other bookstores and so on. Available in PDF. As I said, I can forward the PDF to you. Now, we have here the first one, which is Ba'yul Asnam. And it starts off, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So just as we normally do, may Allah bless all of our authors, our Musanifin, who have written whatever text, whatever article for the purpose of deen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the full rewards in the kubur, in the akhirat, inshallah. And may he also cause us to benefit from them. Amin. So we have here the first one, Man Kasar Rasnam. Right. I'm going to read it one time. I have these in a little more bigger font. I'm just going to going to read it slowly for you all. If you understand, you understand. If you don't understand, no problem. We'll get into the deal afterwards. So let's to read. Um, follow me. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Man kasaral asnama. Ba'yul asnami. Qabla ayyamin kathiratin. Kathiratin jiddan. كان في قرية رجل مشهور جدا وكان اسم هذا الرجل آزر وكان آزر يبيع الأسنام وكان في هذه القرية بيت كبير جدا وكان في هذا البيت أصنام أصنام كثيرة جدا وكان الناس يسجدون لهذه الأصنام وكان أعزر يسجد لهذه الأصنام وكان أعزر يعبد هذه الأصنام قصو that's the Arabic script. Let's get into some of the vocabulary. I'm going to send you this page to the group. I don't know if um, if any of you all who not in as part of the, the thick and Arabic language WhatsApp group, if you can probably forward your um, your number also to Lisa or Sherwin so that they can include you into it, whosoever is uh, in charge of the group, right? So that when I send these few stuffs, you're going to get it. So we have here the verb kasara, yaksiru, it means a break. Sonamun, plural, asnamun, idol and idols. Ba'i'un, seller. Qabala, it means before. Yawmun, ayyamun. Yawmun, singular. Ayyamun, plural, it means day and days. Jiddan, very. The word qar yatun, plural is Quran, village town. Rajulun, plural, rijalun, man, men. Kathirun, many or plenty. Mashhurun, famous. Ba'a, the present tense. Yabi'u. Ba'a. Yabi'u. To sell. He sold. Right? Pass them. Sajada. Yes. Judu. To prostrate. Abada. Ya'budu. To worship. Azaru. The name of the person. The name of the father of Ibrahim. Alayhi salatu salam. So we're going to start inshallah. First thing here. Man kasaral asnama. Man kasaral asnama. In a sentence, man is a harful istifham. Harful istifham means a particle of questioning. Just as you will say, man fa'ala hadha, who did that? Oh, 
take out all that. Simply you want to say, Manhatha, who is this? Manhatha, who is this? Manhathi, who is this feminine? We can apply it in front of the verb kasara, and it becomes man kasara asnama. And what does kasara you said mean? Broke. So man who broke al asnama, the idols, sanamun asnamun. Notice this comes as the object in the sentence. Who broke the idols? The idols are the object. In the case of nas by fatha. Yes, the English is here. So the verb is kasara, he broke. The next part, and this is in the heading of the, the, the statement, Ba'i'ul asnami. Ba'i'ul asnami. The word ba'i'ul means a seller. Ba'i'ul is seller. So ba'i'ul asnami. The seller of the idols. What you want to identify though is that what type of structure this is. This here is the mudaf. And here is the mudafun ilayhi. Right, so this is the mudaf. This is the mudaf ilay. Ba'i'u. And then asnami. Case of Rafa. Case of Jar. The mudaf ilay always exists in the case of Jar. And this is the plural word. Sonamun aslam. The seller of the idols. I know it's time to round off there. Last thing and we're, we're done. So it starts off here. Qabala ayyamin kathiratin. Kathiratin jiddan. I want you all to read after me. Qabala ayyamin kathiratin. Kathiratin jiddan. Qabla means before. Before many days before many days kathiratan jiddan man, very many okay we have the english here as well so what we're looking at is really structure the word qabla it is used as a what you call a dharf or an adverb next week we want to introduce that probably so we have this is called a dharf Therefore, we can say adverb, right? It's an adverb. And it exists in the case of nas, as you see here. This really pertains to a zarf of time. Zarf zaman. It's a zarf zaman, right? You remember those two things? I know we had reached up to this stage previously. Zarf zaman, which is an adverb of time. It exists in the case of nasp, as you see in the fatahadiyah. So this is what case? Nasp. The structure that it comes with is really like the mudhof. And here, the ayamin is really the mudhof ilaihi. Okay, so mudhof, in the case of nasp, because it is a dharf, ayamin is the mudhof ilaihi. But when we look further, we see kathira. And kathiratin is an adjective. So therefore, if it's an adjective, this also has to be what we call a mausuf. So it's a mausuf, which is the adjective construction. The mudha mudhafila is the off structure. Remember that. As the off structure. While it's the mausuf and sifa is the adjective noun construction. So it is kathira tin. And this here is the sifa. Right, so we have kabla ayamen kathiratin. Now, something that we did recently as well. Ayamen, what type of plural it is? Yaumun is the singular. Ayam is the plural. So we say it is a plural word. But what type of plural? It is a broken plural. And being a broken plural, how do we treat it? Right, we did that today as well. Treat it as a feminine singular word. Feminine singular word. And therefore, the adjective for it will also be feminine singular. Okay? So, that is a structure for it. Qabla ayyamin kathiratin. 
before many days kathiratan jiddan very many now jiddan is also act like here as a as an adverb as well of of you know so this is also in the case of nasb notice jiddan now this is always used like this we always use jiddan in this context okay and this here kathiratan is really an emphasis for the kathiratan that was used before so kathiratan takes the same case. it's one of it, it is following it in the same case okay it will be the same thing there all right so um i will not go into this other part all right so we started off that's what i wanted to do i know you all are looking at the time time to run off there as well inshallah um uh, thank you all for your patience in in class if you all have any questions and so on you can send it to, to me you know um for those who don't know my number if you need a if you need to ask any question or you want this um well, I won't send all of my slides to you but any particular thing that you want me to, to explain further there's no problem with that all right so we'll stop here jazakum la khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh any any question before you before you close off mashallah assalamu alaikum